it's interesting. It's very, very interesting, and and it's significant too. It's significant too that it's not the 11th of September. First of all, September 11th this year is is Sunday. Is a Sunday, and most who are familiar with Ethiopia's New Year, if they don't study in any, if they don't, if they don't study it and, and get into the details, they will think. You know, a lot of people will think that. Um, September 11th this year is also Ethiopia's New Year. So it's like that word in the prophets um, where it says that the watchman, how the watchman is supposed to warn the people, like, and if the watchman doesn't warn the people, in fact, in getting into this, this uh, second part of this, because it was tomorrow in this Tomorrow's World magazine, I think that we had seen it somewhere when we was looking through these pages, reading through this particular magazine's pages, because this kind of segues and brings us to the next, the next um, message and the next update. But it's from the pro prophetical word, and those who are familiar with the prophetical word know that it says that if the if the watchman doesn't doesn't warn and doesn't give any any kind of warning, you understand? Therefore what befalls the people would be in his, you know what I mean, in his, or in other words, in his or, 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 or her hands, you know, if they don't, if they don't warn, if they don't warn the people, like when there's a message to, to, to warn the people about. So one thing to be warned about is that this particular year, September, for, for September 11th, 2011, this year, is actually the eve of the Ethiopian Addis Ahmed, of the Addis Ahmed, not as it is in most other cases, in other words, in most other cases and times. And this is not us doing, this is not our doing. This is actually, this is written in the heavens. And if we were able to... Um, understand the heavens, if there wasn't so many artificial lights and distractions down here on earth at night, and we can really see the heavens and God's, and God's computation of time for ourselves, we would be able to recognize that actually um, there's a difference. And we can almost feel it as well, you understand, that this year is a little different than other years, duh, no problem with that. But moreover, as far as the calculations, the calculation of uh, sacred time goes, um, that September 11th this year is the eve of the new year and not the new year. So in other words, it won't be Sunday. Sunday would not be Ethiopian New Year for 2011. It would actually, it would actually be Monday, Monday, September 12th. And that's that's very interesting. Coming to hearing. Even in the media, they've been using September 12th. You understand? We've been so involved with the Torah, the Torah teachings and the Torah portions, um, with the the series of, of new books and reprints of books that we have been um, either editing or preparing or either writing, and with other aspects of the ministry. You understand? With other aspect aspects of the ministry of His Imperial Majesty that. Um, that almost that almost snuck up even on us, and when we say, "Wait, we know that every every couple of years, every about four years is a leap year. Every four or so years is a leap year," as we've tried to explain by what we have on the on the on on the whiteboard behind us, because on the whiteboard behind us, we're looking through this newspaper. Again, but you know the prophetical word. I think it's in Ezekiel, actually, in the prophet. His E.L. says that whenever um, the prophet, you understand, or whenever God sends a warning and the prophet is supposed to warn the people or the watchman, actually, not so much the prophet, because the prophets have already spoken, but the, when the watchman is supposed to warn the people, if he doesn't warn the people, you understand, and these consequences come down, then the, the blood, in other words, the blood is on our hands if we don't warn ones and ones. So it's very important that we do give this warning concerning September 11th, 2011, is not the Ethiopian New Year. We repeat, 
it is not the Ethiopian New Year. It is September 12th. And the, 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 simple, the simple text, the simple text of the, of the reasoning, in other words, the, the simple explanation of it, this is a, another good book that actually touches on the aspect, and I wanted to share this with you all. And then I'll let you, let me see if it's in here. It should be in here, but let me first of all find it. If I can find this page um, for you, then I can show you this particular page. And then it'll be easier, it should be easier for ones and ones to connect this. Um, and I'm going too fast. Okay, we'll take our time on, on, on that aspect, but as... We were explaining in the part one concerning these these four years. What you see at the top is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you see that little square over there, right? You see that little square over there. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Okay, this is a book introduction. Okay, here, here it goes actually right here. Here is the, uh, and we've used it in another video. You might might recall this. We've used this in another video right here. This is the name of the book. One one of the one of the books right here. Introduction to African Civilization by John um, G. Jackson. By John G. Jackson. And you can see this is a pretty well worn, our pretty well worn um, copy uh, of this and. As as we get in some of the detail when it talks about the ancient the ancient okay, this was actually the other page where where it's in there. This is the other page, right? This is the twelve signs or we can say the twelve tribes. The twelve tribes of Israel would have understood this better than the um Eurocentric um imagery that is used to um connotate the 12 uh, zodiacal or zodiacal signs, right? Okay, so that's one page right there. Now, some of the information that it gives about it, we thought we had it highlighted, and just taking this a little bit, just be patient if you can, be patient with us so we can find um, one of our earliest, um, ref okay, here it goes right here, here it goes. Here it goes. It's around page 140. In order to understand this, right, concerning the Ethiopian New Year. Now, first and foremost, we need to be able to tell time. If we can't tell time, then how in the world will we ever be able to know the signs, the signs of the time? Now, Dr. York, you know, Mom Issa, you know, he produced this book. Some of you probably know this book. Right, it was a, it was a series on revelations, right? Um, and in the particular book, he has the four living creatures. You see this right here, this picture of the Ancient of Days. This was the um, Nubian Islamic Hebrews or Nuwabian, one can call it, um, rendition of the Ancient of Days, right? Or the four living creatures, right? The four living creatures. And this is from Revelation chapter 4, verses 6. To eight. So when we see this right here, this also refers to um, Revelation chapter 4, um, 6 to 8. Revelation chapter 4, 6 to 8. Now, some say that this is the, the four great empires of the beast. And, right, and we have the Ancient of Days now in the center, in the center of that. Now, within our rendition of that, we went back to some of our Ethiopic sources where they had the Trinity, you've probably seen the imagery of the three um, men that looked the same way, the three men that looked the same way that are sitting down and gesturing. Um, instead, we put his majesty on the throne because that's the reality, you understand, surrounded by that same imagery. You understand? And we'll bring that forward maybe in another video. But we've had that in some of the older videos. So some of you all might recall it. Others, um, well, after you see it, again, then you remember what you had seen previously. So then these four great empires of the beast. Now that's one way of looking at these four. 
You understand these four, and this is another symbology of this four. Now, what's interesting is that this um, One World Trade Center that they're doing, you understand, the One World Trade Center, and you see what it's all about over here. You see who's riding on, you know, who's riding on the beach. You see those twin towers right there. You understand, well, stay tuned to 9-11 plus 10, right, 9-11 plus 10. So that's another powerful image of these particular last days. Now, in Revelation, in Revelation, that's true. You see, in Revelation, that is true, um, regardless from, you know, what particular point of view, because different people, you know, might see things differently, but still the truth about what they see is basically one and the same. This is what we have in the prophets. So now, right here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four the four years, each year, according to the Ethiopic perspective, the ancient Ethiopic perspective, each year is either called, according to now, in the Zemene um, Christos, you understand, or Zemene um, Christian, as we would have it, each one of the four years is named either after Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Now, what's important about this, let me use the pointer for a moment, What's important about this is that, see this image right here? This image right here and the way that it's, um, let's just take off the edges right there. This right here is actually two squares, two squares. We have to understand this is two squares. And the Ancient of Days would be seated right here, and these would be like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, the heavens... This is pointing to the heavens. And in other imagery, we'll be able to, to show exactly what, what we mean, but we're using the whiteboard right here. So this is the heavens. Another way of, of viewing this, now I hope, hope you can see over here on the board, is, is to draw one square, right? And then if you draw another square, you know the octagon. You know the octagonal image, right? The octagonal image. And this is how this is what the, the that Freedom Tower, that 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 new twin towers. They understand what they're doing. They're using our sacred and ancient sciences to convey their um, white supremacist culture and civilization, not just on themselves, but on 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 the entire world. This is why now they call it not the Freedom Tower anymore, but the um, One World. They call it the one world center or something like that. But it's one world that's in there. It's significant. But now, what we notice was interesting, it begins off of a square. As the building goes up to the midway point, it changes into this octagonal kind of shape, you understand, which is the two squares, on the square, off the square, if you understand that from Freemasonry. And then when it, when it concludes, it goes back to a square. Some say it's like the two buildings wrapped up in one. It's the idea of the two buildings wrapped up in one. But it's two squares. It's actually two squares. Now, the square in the heaven for us as Ethiopic Christians and elect Rastafari is understood through these four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, understood from an Ethiopic perspective. Now, this year, September 11th, 2011, would have been thought of, and most might still think of it until they get this update, this upgrade, as Ethiopian New Year, the Addis Ahmed. It is not the Addis Ahmed this year, but it's September 12, 2011. And it's also known as we're moving from the year of Luke, or Kedus uh, Luke As Wengalawi, to Kedus Johannes Wengalawi. In other words, we're at this point, you understand, between Luke and John, as of 2011. Now, Ethiopically, it's known as 2003. So from an Ethiopic perspective, from an Ethiopic perspective, we're in not 2011, we're actually in 2003. And when we come into September 12, 2011, Ethiopically speaking, it'll be 2004. You understand? 2004 from the, let's put this EC, so you won't confuse this, and let's put EC, EC there, right, EC. And this right here will be AD, you understand, or AD. And we know that there's a lot of other ways of saying it, but so be it. 
You understand? But it'll be A, the Anno Domini. It's still the year of the Lord, regardless of how many pagans and heathens that are out there. You understand? It's still the Lord, even though in truth he is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it is still 2011 Anno Domini, year of our Lord, or year of the Lord, right? But according to the Ethiopic calendar or the Ameta Meheret, the year of mercy, it is 2003 E.C. We're still in there. Now, as we cross over from 20 or 20, um, 2011, September 11th, 2011 to September 12th, 2011, then it will become 2004 E.C. E.C., according to the Ethiopic or Ameta Meheret, Ameta Meheret, or really for us, Bamarinya A.M., it will be the a.m., you understand? So we're going to have to really update, upgrade our calendar. In fact, um, one of our subscribers had mentioned if we can spend some time on Ethiopic or the, our Ethiopian calculation of time. That's very, very important because here's where we wanted to go with this. We wanted to return to the beginning, you understand, the beginning, Genesis chapter 14, chapter 1, verse 14, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 where it says, And Elohim, ha Elohim said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now this is, this is, this is very, very, this is very, very important. Let there be what, it says? It says, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day, the day, you understand, from the night, the time of illumination, for the time of unillumination, you understand, the day from the night, and let them be for what? For signs, for signs, and for seasons, for days, and for years. Let's get that, um, that, that John G. Jackson book, right, the introduction by John Henry Clark, Introduction to African Civilizations, right? And when we go to the very beginning of the book, let's go to the beginning of the book, the first one, the first graphic shown right there. And let us uh, remind, let's see how clear you can see this. Can you see this right here? You can see these are the signs and the seasons according to ancient Egypt. You understand, according to our ancient Kamite, Kamite root, you understand, which comes out of inner Africa, which comes out of the Tob, the land of Tob, or the good land, or the Kui land, the land of the gods. You understand, or Ethiopia comes from that root right there. So you, you see there's 12. There are 12. You know what I'm saying? These are the 12 so-called signs of the ancient Zodiac. Now, here in Genesis, we have to understand time. And I know we've talked about this in different videos from different perspectives, but we have to understand that this all now begins, we can say, this all begins right here with Genesis 1 and 14. This right here begins with Genesis 1 and 14, right? So we have the word where it says that Elohim said, let there be lights. Some can say this is stars, you understand, or galaxies or constellations in the firmament of the heaven of the Shemayim or the Samayat or the Samai to divide the day, which is the illuminated time, from the night, from the shadow state or the unilluminated time. And it says, let them be for signs. Now, we just touched on the signs, right, the signs, and for seasons, and for specific seasons, and for days, certain days have certain significance, you understand, and years. Now, most of the city folks, because we've been so shittified, did I say shittified? I meant to say shittified, but is there really any big difference? We've been so shittified or cityfied, that we don't really understand these things because we know that, well, we can go to the supermarket or the corner store, our food come in. We don't have to worry about the land. We don't have to worry about knowing the stars or knowing when the high tide. Oh, we hear a lot about high tide now because out in Jersey, you understand, know those uh, poor people, you understand, know are suffering the floods and the inundation because the tides are rising. So we hear a lot about tides now. They're like, oh, that storm Irene is coinciding with the full moon. And, you know, the moon has an effect on the tide. I'm sure a lot of the Negroes are probably like, oh, so what? You understand, know because you, you all have been so disorientated, 
you know what I'm saying, misoriented and disoriented that you've been taken out of your own, your true element, you know what I'm saying? But the dangerous thing is when, not if, you know what I'm saying, not if Babylon will fall. It's not about if Babylon, repeat. It's not indegna means repeat. It's not about if Babylon falls. It's actually when Babylon falls. But see, if you don't know the signs of the times, then you just won't know. You know, I mean, you'll know after it already happened if you survive, but you just don't know what you just don't know. So it's important for us to understand the signs, the signs of the time, both the signs and the times. So when we're talking about um, so-called uh, 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 astronomy, even if we happen to touch on astrology, you understand, it is for knowledge purposes. See, a lot of folks will say, oh, that's pagan, that's heathen, you understand, whatever, you understand, whatever. They don't understand that the way they're living in their modern Babylonian way of life is ten times more pagan and heathen than somebody out there in the bush worshiping a rock, a stone, a stick, or a tree. Because at least that person in the bush doing that, you understand, they're just doing that to themselves and, and whoever whoever follows after them. But this, this garbage that you're into in Babylon is polluting the whole world. It's iniquity. The iniquity, the iniquity is reaching up into heaven. You understand? In other words, there has to be, there is, will be a time and a judgment. Now, people say, well, when is going to happen? Well, see, the first thing is that you're being warned, first of all. You understand? You've got to hear. You've got to hear and heed. You don't hear. You don't hear. You understand? You don't hear I and I. How many times was your name called? Think about it. Think about it for a moment. So anyway, here in Genesis 1 and 14, Elohim is saying, is, this is the fourth day now, the fourth day. This is where the, the sun and the moon and the stars become visible. Now, what's important about the fourth day, it corresponds with that, what once they call that fourth chakra. You understand? And between the seven, the fourth is the midway point. This is the midway point. Remember in Revelation, it talked about the three and a half, three and a half years, so forth and so on, and that midway point where that covenant would be. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting now what we have right here, because this is the basic foundation, right, for understanding the heavens. It's important for us to understand the heavens. I mean, you have watches and, and clocks and digital. What do you think that it, it synchronizes itself with, in part? With the heavens. It's based upon that. You know what I'm saying? You would not know how to plant your food. You know what I'm saying? You would not know when to, when to, to reap or sow or to harvest or any of that if you don't understand the heavens. That is God's clock and God's computation of the true God. Our God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So we need to understand the heavens. And by not understanding, some would still think that September 11th, 2011, is Ethiopia's new year. As, in fact, if we didn't check ourselves, we might have run off and said the same thing, even though we should and we did know better. But... All praise be to the God and Father, of our Lord and Savior, that we was able to check that out for ourselves. And that's why we said, you know what? We recognize that we could have stumbled over that. So we want to make sure that we share this, you understand, that we share this with others. Now, proceeding, proceeding, okay, I'll point out, proceeding from there. Now, so, so first we begin with Genesis 1 and 14. You understand where God said, let there be lights in the, in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. You understand, let them be for... For, for signs and seasons and days and what years. So we're dealing with certain days, we're dealing with certain years, because when you're living in the creation in God's way, not in your little shitties. You see, the little shitties, you rely on others who are doing these calculations for you, but if they don't do it correctly, you got problems. That means you starve. You understand? And if you starve long enough, you die. You're dead. And if you don't know how to plant or grow food because you don't understand the heavens and the earth and the relationship of the elements, then you die. So, see, understand how, overstand, overstand how, because you've been understanding in a sense, but now get an overstanding of this. So we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? And these four we can symbolically put in a square, 
for example. Now, the earth is a circle, but the circle basically is 360 degrees and the square is 360 degrees, so the number of degrees mathematically a circle is equal to the square, so don't be deceived by its shape. Most of the C by its shape. A circle and a square is equal mathematically, spiritually. They are equal in the number of degrees because they're both 360. So we need to understand that right there, but their, their shape deceives one. That's why it says, judge by what righteousness? Judge by what righteousness? Not by appearances. So by the appearance of things people are judging, and therefore they are violating our black Lord's um, word and, and warning and, and good advice. You understand? So let's make our wills obedient to good influences and avoid evil. That is to show the greatest wisdom. But in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by hymenotes, by living faith. And this will bring this into, some of y'all might remember this speech where the Imperial Majesty speaks on religion. This is one of the most important um, um, word sounds. I would say it's because of these words here that I can say in spirit and in truth that I, in a Christian name, you understand that I am a Christ man because of the teaching of his imperial majesty, period, point blank. But we'll deal with that right there. That's the, the, speak, the speech on religion. That's where his majesty speaks on religion. But let's understand this about September 11th, September 12th, because now it's September 9th, so we really don't have a whole lot of time to try to disseminate and get this out there to you all. You understand? So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? One, two, three, four. An who let sauce arat, right? In Revelation 4, 6 to 8, it's interesting because it speaks about these, 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 these um, well, let's, let's see what it speaks about. You understand? Let, go there for yourself because you, somebody else can give you a summary, and the summary may, may miss something that might be important to you, you understand, or to me. So Revelation chapter 4, verses uh, 6 to 8, it says, the four living creatures, four living creatures, right, the four living creatures, right, the four living creatures, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass. And before the throne, now notice something. This um, new freedom tower, they call it One World Center, something like that today for the twin tower, blah, 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 9, 11 plus 10. Um, it's, it's number glass. Think about it. A lot of glass is used. So if something happened, you know, just think. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like Unto or like to crystal, crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. They had eyes everywhere. They had eyes before. They had eyes behind. And the first beast was like a lion. So we get the first beast right, and we're gonna break this down with the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke and John um, paradigm. The first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, flying eagle, not a flying dragon, but it's interesting that, that the, something about that right there, but understand this right here, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Kedus, 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 Adonai, Yah, El Shaddai, which was and is and is to come, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The one who already was in ancient days, so in ancient Egypt they knew him, the Amen, you understand? Um, he is, he is right now presently even revealed in the personality of the king of kings of Ethiopia, Ainai Rastafari, and he is also the one who is to come, you understand, and give Bobby Wrong, Babylon, you know, their final ass whooping. Basically, you, you know what I mean? But, but allow things to be the way they are. So we have these four beasts. It says that the first one was as a what? It was as a lion. And the second one was like what? The second one was like a calf. 
You understand? Or like a type of uh, a, 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 a baby, uh, um, like what was that, a cow kind of, right? And the third beast was, had a face as a man. Notice the third beast had a face. As a man. It didn't say that the third one was a man, but it had a face as a man.